Hi, I'm Nina with Phoenix Contact. If you're currently using 1771 I.O., chances are you're worried about the future of that system. You may have even thought about migrating that system to something newer, but kept putting it off because the idea of ripping out that old system and replacing it just wasn't financially feasible. Let's face it, shutting down a line for a couple of weeks to switch out a control system, reprogram, rewire, and revalidate just isn't possible in many situations. The sheer economics of today's business environment prohibits that kind of operation. Fortunately, Phoenix Contact has come up with a streamlined approach to migrating your 1771 I.O., one that eliminates rewiring your field wires and allows the physical cutover to the new controller in only minutes. So whether you're looking to upgrade within the Allen Bradley ecosystem or switch to an entirely new control manufacturer, migrating your 1771 I.O. has never been easier. For the physical migration, all you need are two pieces from Phoenix Contact, a simple open-ended D-sub cable and one of five different I.O. card migration boards. The first step is to physically connect the open ends of the D-sub cable to the new I.O. card. This can be done while the existing I.O. is running, which means nothing within your process needs to be shut down. Once connected, the cable is routed to the location of the legacy rack. This same procedure would be used for each I.O. card in the rack. These cables can then be staged until a normal plant shutdown occurs, perhaps over a weekend or a holiday. Now we're ready to cut over at the legacy I.O. We see the existing I.O. populated and wired to the field at the swing arms. Keep in mind, those field connections are one of the key headaches when considering a traditional rip and replace system migration. To start the migration, simply pull back the I.O. swing arm, rather than unwiring any of the signals. Again, the point is that no field wires are lifted here. After pulling back the swing arm, simply remove the existing 1771 I.O. card. Once removed, take the appropriate cable for that given channel and route it to the top of the rack, then insert it into the header of the migration board. When the cable is routed through the rack, simply insert the migration board into the rack. From there, the final step is to re-engage the swing arm that is hanging there with the existing field wiring. That's it for this card. Now shift focus to the rest of the cards on this rack. In each case, you'll follow the same method. Pull out the legacy card, root and connect the cable, insert and re-engage the swing arm, all without lifting a single field wire. Once those steps are completed for the legacy slots, you've essentially turned your 1771 rack into a junction box. The field wiring is now physically connected to your new controller and ready to be powered up. So you can see, there is an alternative to ripping and replacing your 1771 I.O. It's quick and allows hundreds of I.O. to be migrated in a fraction of the time. It slashes labor costs associated with the migration because of its simplicity and speed. It significantly cuts down on potential wiring errors by maintaining all existing field terminations. And finally, it is controller agnostic and enables migrating your 1771 I.O. to any controller of your choice. To learn more about this amazing new migration system, reach out to your local Phoenix Contact distributor or check out phoenixcontact.com slash 1771 migration for detailed data sheets and more information.